Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simon. It's like diamonds. We are back talking about the top secret, but not so top secret because now we've created a massive platform for it. Network effect. This is such an amazing way and probably one of the easiest ways and certainly the best way in terms of consistent and real time to find new spots, to be able to get new trends, to see what's working right now. We have had multiple guests. I think we're on episode, where is it? I don't know, 300 or something. Hopefully you guys listening will have a better idea than I do. Yeah, we're on like 327, 328. And we've had countless guests. I'm talking about big names from our good old friend C. Richardson and Tom Rowland and Derek Engel and the Redfish Assassin. I mean, some of these people who've won countless uh, tournaments, including some of the people here uh, that you're about to hear from. If, if you're watching, you might see Justin and, uh, and, and Luke, who I know have, uh, have spent a lot more time in tournaments, why it's just getting into it. Austin, I don't know if you've done many tournaments yet, but every one of them, the one thing that they always said separated them from the losers was having a network. It wasn't some special lure. It wasn't some special seven foot six rod. It wasn't the horsepower they had on the back of their boat. It was always a network, a group, a community of people they could go to and trust to give like accurate advice to get real time what's working out data. And Luke, you've had a couple stories you've shared in the past, and I, I hope we'll kind of uh, bring those back to life because they're great examples of how powerful that is. And Luke, you have a saying, what is it, human intelligence? Yeah, human intelligence is always better than historical trends, like trend analysis. I, I made the big mistake for many years, actually, I've always been analytical and I was logging every trip. I printed out the tide chart. I logged on the tide chart. I had signals for, for redfish, sea trout, snook. And so I was keeping really detailed notes and it was just paralysis by analysis. And, and I would look over, you know, year over year, I'd pull out last the two Septembers when I was going out in September. And I'm like, oh man, I need, to, I need to go to this spot with this lure on this tide. And then the weather's totally different one September from the, from the other. And and what I realized is there's just so many moving parts. If you try to do the historical analysis, it can still get some helpful information, but it's not nearly as helpful as just having a buddy who was just out yesterday or even three, four days ago and got on some good fish and, and gave you an honest report. Like that, that is a total gold mine. That is totally trumps any sort of historical year over year, like computer generated analysis. And so, it's another reason you're, smart fishing game plans your 10 minute video every friday is so powerful because you're that's i mean your job full time is to be on the water one and then two curating what everyone else is doing and you take everything that's working from texas to florida to virginia and everywhere in between and uh, and basically put it out there in a curated 10 minute video on exactly where you should be fishing and as, as real time as you can get uh, and we do like i, I want to make sure that we're all clear we do like the computer generated AI, artificial intelligence stuff. Because I mean, we had that with smart fishing tides. It's, it's definitely a tool, but it's not the only tool you want to rely on. Like I said, I'll take a real time calling up a buddy or being in our insider community and seeing someone's real post that just happened this week over you know something that, that a computer gave me. By the way, uh, you said you use little symbols for the fish that you used to catch. What did you use for catfish? Was it a little poop emoji? What, what did you, <laughs> what was your legend? Those did not make it on the chart. I was uh, not tracking my catfish yet. I would have thought you would have. <laughs> so good at it. <laughs> and, and so uh, pivot now from the poop emoji. So we want Austin on here. If you don't know, Austin is our community manager. So that dude is in there. If, if you are in the community, you know who Austin is because he is commenting on every single post. And he does such an amazing job. He's out there like finding stuff for any new member that needs something. Because I mean, let's face it, we have like over a thousand blog posts now. It's a lot in different spot dissections from that's where we get on a, a satellite map and actually like basically just draw out how we would fish that area where, where the best looking spots are. Uh, Wyatt and Tony do amazing jobs on, uh, on those. And so Austin goes out and finds all that stuff for our members. And so if um, you are in the community, you know who he is. If you're not, what the heck are you waiting on? Join us in the community because that's really what this whole thing is all about is the power of the network slash community. And uh, you'll quickly get to know Austin. He might even send you a, a couple paragraphs of, uh, of intel on your first question. Absolutely, guys. Yeah, I will completely agree, though. The um, 
the seasons are always going to be a little bit different. The weather is not going to be the same on January 12th next year as it was this year. And so why, uh, while those things are helpful to kind of keep track of all of that, it's not going to be the same. And getting the right now is so, so important. But the awesome thing is, is rather than going to, you know, some of these other platforms where you could ask those questions, but you might regret it, <laughs> um, you can come here and I promise that you're not going to get anybody coming at you um, and downing you for, for asking that question or just giving you kind of like smart aleck little comments and stuff like that. So it's a safe place to come get that information. And then it's also somewhere where you're going to get real truthful information as well. Like people go so in detail in these reports yeah. that it's almost crazy. Like I've learned so much um, just looking at some of the information that people put in these posts that I wouldn't have even thought to, to even, you know, put in there. So it's really cool to see like the way that other people think alone and, and kind of put their uh, their thinking of their reports together for one. And then you can get local advice from somebody that is a good person um, on your area. So, I mean, the community is absolutely like the best thing uh, if you ask me. And I also do um, strong angler of the week where I pick a post from our community um, uh, every single week where somebody went fishing with friends and family. And in that I asked them how salt strong has helped them become a better angler. Every single one of them, at least just about, there might've been one or two that, that this wasn't mentioned. The community is like everybody's number one go-to thing. It's, it's, it's really an awesome thing. And, and everyone in our community is so helpful. And unlike, you know, Facebook that you were kind of alluding to, where it's, it's Facebook's more about the hero shot, right? A lot of people go there, including me, you know, just with their fish pick and that's it. Like, Hey, nice stud trout or stud, stud snook, PB, redfish, whatever it is. And you get a lot of likes and thumbs up, which is cool. Nothing against that. But in our community, for those of you in there, you know, this, like, I mean, they're putting everything from what they used to how they rigged it, to what tide it was to like, Hey, I was fishing mangrove points or a Creek mouth. I mean, it is incredibly, incredibly helpful. So I, I've kind of put you on the spot here, Austin, because I know I just saw your pictures from this past week. Uh, you guys killed it. Uh, some really stud redfish. So like, how are you using community? Someone who's in there every day or, I, I know you're in Jacksonville. For those of you wondering, Austin's up in Jacksonville. I see a lot of members in Jacksonville, St. Augustine area. So how do you use it to go out there and, and basically maximize your time? Uh, so basically I'll just kind of dial in on the reports that are in my area and just put my eyes on all of them. Um, I sometimes will kind of just like the artificial um, intelligence stuff, go back like years and look around the same time frames. But of course, it's more important to get the right now. And I'll just look and see what people are having success with. And, um, and anything at all that, that's in there can be very helpful, whether it's the type of fish they're catching, if I'm seeing more fish of a certain species and I just want to go have a good time, then I'm probably going to go fish for that species. If I'm seeing uh, that somebody uh, shared a location in their report and um, I've been having a hard time, then maybe I'll just go fish where they just caught some fish. And there might be if the conditions are the same based on the report, because that's always shared normally is what the wind was, you know, um, all that good stuff. If it lines up, then I can go right where they went. And there's a good chance since it wasn't too far away that there's probably some fish in the area as well. Um, I mean, there's a ton of information in the majority of these uh, posts, even some people will post um, multiple reports at one time. So you can get a lot um, from their previous trips all in one post a lot of the times. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you don't have a network, a helpful network, you are absolutely missing out. And I, I want to pivot to Wyatt real quick because it's, it's probably one of the coolest stories. And I'm going to preface this with, I lived in Texas for five years. Uh, my wife and I lived and started in Austin and then in Houston and fished in Galveston. So what I'm about to say, I can say because I was a Texan, even had my proud Texas uh, a little decal on my Tahoe. You know, it, they're only, only state, I think, that Chevy does that for. So where I'm going with this is Texans are very proud. And Texas always believe that our state's different and we're different and your lures and stuff won't work here. And yet our good friend, Wyatt, who had, I don't know, ever fished in Texas day in his life, living in North Carolina in Wilmington, moves to Texas using all the same tactics and the same network 
that we have that we're talking about today and even the same lures and takes it over to Texas and why it, what happened? Well, I started catching a lot of really big trout. And it, oh, was, uh, snap. <laughs> it was right off the bat, man. And it was funny because for the longest time, you know, we, we'd have meetings here at Salt Strong about, guys, how can we show Texans that Slam Shady works in Texas other than showing them the thousands of other pictures our insiders were posting from Texas? Uh, how can we show them that this lure works? I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to go down there and I'm going to use it. And for months and months, a lot of Texans said Slam Shady doesn't work in Texas. Go down there, Slam Shady produces multiple 20 inch trout on my first trip out and the tactics that I use to find those fish and put the slam shady obviously in the right spot it's not a magic lure that's going to draw fish into your location but if you know the fish are there they're going to draw and fish over from Dallas it's so good <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the, the the tactics that we teach you know that's you know the basis of this started I believe the first couple spot sections that we did were in Tampa uh, and then they started branching out further and further. And I saw one of the first ones we did actually out of Florida was Tony dissected an area in Galveston, uh, believe it or not. And then it moved into the Carolinas, things like that. And you could really see how the same game plan was just mirrored everywhere else. But the spots looked slightly different and they were obviously in different geographic regions. But I took the same game plans that I used in North Carolina that were based off of Luke and Tony's game plans in Florida, applied them in Texas, and they produced fish with lures that were told to be not working in Texas. So it's very funny to see how people think that their area is so special and their area is so different just because they might be struggling with something that is local to them and they see success somewhere else. And it's not easy to admit when you're making mistakes. Uh, it's just easy to say, you know, it's different here. So that's that's a big thing that I see. And I saw that in the Carolinas. I saw it in, you know, when, when I would go up to Virginia. It's just something that people say. But the reality of it is these fish are all the same species. They behave, they behave the same way. And the areas look slightly different, but the same tactics and game plans will still apply regardless of where you live, which is why the community is so awesome because you can pull different game plans from different people. And I've always seen the community as like, or this giant network of kind of almost fish scientists and we're constantly conducting experiments. We've got some members that have gone out and done, done lure tests on their own. Yeah. And it's so awesome to see all these different experiments being done and all these different game plans being applied. And I, I, I've learned some probably, again, I would say my biggest resource from Salt Strong has always been the community, even before I was on staff here. So I constantly learn from it, you know, week in, week out. And I use it to, to continue to do my job when I travel to go do insider reports further north in Galveston and further south in South Padre. So there's a, a lot that can be pulled there. And I, I'm, I'm a testament to the fact that the community and the network effect is, uh, is probably the number one thing that an angler can have. Yep. And there's, there's kind of two pieces of it. One, I, I don't know how many are going up per day, but it, it's, do you, do you know, Luke right now? And just in general, how many reports? Yeah. How many uh, actual probably, like fishing reports? I believe it's probably 60 ish a day. Something okay. like that. And I, we, we had some, there's 150, 200 where I, I, I'm trying to get in there and keep, you know, keep up with everyone. I'm like, Whoa, Whoa, like what happens today? Um, it's, I mean, it's crazy. So that's, that's number one. And so we've been doing this for five years. You can imagine, I mean, there's tens of thousands of actual fishing reports documented, which is really cool. So that's, you know, part one, that's, you know, what we're talking about here. And some of it's historical, like, you know, a little bit older, some of it's, you know, two days ago, some of it's five minutes ago. That part's pretty cool. The other part is because we have 25,000 members now, it's just like Facebook or anything else. You get a lot of people who are super active in terms of posting. And then you have a lot of people who are just super active in terms of scrolling and just looking and reading. And part number two is just asking a question, right? I see that all the time where someone says, hey, I'm on vacation and I'm going here. Or, have you guys seen the bait here near the Skyway? Right now we're dealing with some red tide issues here in Florida. Hey guys, have, has it hit over here yet? And then all of a sudden people start chiming in. Some of the people who maybe maybe just don't like to post as much or don't get to fish as much and just kind of living vicariously through a community, which is awesome, but have a ton of knowledge. Uh, that part has been really, really awesome. Uh, and so I know, you know, Wyatt has done some of that too. Like, Hey guys, I'm going to fish in, in a tournament a couple hours South or North of where I normally fish. What are you guys seeing? What are the, what are the trends like? And you're getting real time. It's like having a fishing guide in your back pocket, really, really powerful. And so Justin, I want to pivot over to you because Justin's got a unique story as well. I mean, for a while, I mean, that's why he was, 
I mean, he was not making a full-time living, but was making, you know, some money and, and doing incredibly well in a, it, it, it kayak tournaments. And I know you had a network there and I know when you got out of it, you and Derek and some of their guys, and you all kind of share what's working, you know, it's, it's great to have a network where everyone kind of lifts each other up the whole rising tide lifts all boats. So talk about how you used a network and then how that, you know, same mentality is, uh, is, is applying over in the, the insider community. So it was a, it was a grind for many years, you know, for anybody that gets into fishing and they catch the first redfish or a couple trout and they want to go and be consistent over and over and over again, you have two paths. You can go out and just, you know, throw something at the wall all the time and hope that it sticks, or you can start researching. And, you know, we're talking 15 years ago, 12 years ago, going online and trying to find a resource that can help me be a better angler and find out where fish are biting, what they're biting on. It was, it was limited. There were one or two platforms a while back where um, the kind of the feel or the way that these posts were made was like, you were right there with the person, you know, they would talk about what the sunrise was like, what the sounds were like, what the water looked like and their journey across and what the thoughts were. There was a time on other platforms when there was this immersive experience in the post that you would read and it was really exciting, you know, because then you'd feel like you were there with that person. They shared so much information and you could reach out to them and say, you know, can you help me out? I want to try fishing that area. Can you offer a couple tips that used to be there? And Are you talking about like, past, like Florida sportsman like forum. Yeah, there was one. I had one. In, it was um, good. Called, Florida sportsman was one. I in college having never, I didn't, I've never been a boat owner. Everybody out there. I, I would, like I've said it before, I would rent a two person sit inside kayak. I'd go over to Cedar key and I would throw stuff at the wall every single trip for like four years through college. And I would try to use Florida sportsmen. And I'd see these posts and I'd reach out to people and ask for help privately. So it's not shared everywhere. And everybody was either protective about the information or they were just straight up, like, go find your own fish and struggle the way I did. And it was discouraging because I, I had a passion for it. I wanted to share in that experience with everybody. And I found another platform in the Orlando Kayak Fishing Forum. And this is all before the community, okay? This is all that we had was either going out and meeting people at the boat ramp or on the water. Which was not online. easy for you with the bowl cut like you had. No, no. It's, <laughs> yeah, people, people kind of looked at me like, I don't want to talk to that guy. <laughs> I keep going the other way. But... The point is something changed guys, like something changed in the past, I don't know, six or seven years. And it, it turned into this, instead of anglers wanting to help anglers go enjoy the sport, it turned into this aspect of protection for fear that the things that you go enjoy, you, you're worried that the fishery is going to be overfished or you're not going to be able to go out and fish and, and catch fish. And I had a, I met people through a couple online platforms here and there, people on the water. I'd go to tournaments and you just are friendly. You start talking to one another. And that was fine. That took years and years and years of building up that network of going to events, seminars and tournaments and asking around combined with a lot of trial and error. And here I am. It was the end of last year and you guys reached out to me. I joined the team and I got to realize and learn what the community is. And it's very much a, you know, Hey, Austin, I want to come up to Jacksonville and, and catch a redfish. I, I haven't caught a redfish in Jacksonville in five years, or I've never caught one. Um, what do I do? And it's not just the fact that you'll share information of things to look for. You might even be the kind of person to say, come crash on my couch. We're going to get a pizza tonight. We're going to hang out. We're going to go out together and we're going to, we're going to go slay fish together. Like I have goosebumps talking about it because that's what makes it special. How many couches, how many couches do you have at your house, Justin? <laughs> I got, I got a futon back behind me. I got room <laughs> at my place and I'm all about that. Like <laughs> helping other people be successful. It, it doesn't just help you grow as an angler. It's a feel good thing for me. You know, I've, I've been fortunate to catch a lot of fish, travel a lot of places. I've been successful in tournaments and nothing beats the feeling of, sharing in an experience with someone else or a gigantic group of people, 25,000 people. It, it beats any other platform that I've ever been involved in. Um, and it's special. So you use it for different things, right? People use the community platform to share their information because they, they want to share their skill set with other people. They want to learn from other people. Philip Stoddard, Andy Hong, there's a couple guys in there that like are just on a whole other level. Yeah. And I thought, you know, my 10 plus years of experience, I thought I'd 
was skilled. And I see people and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so much to learn from so many other anglers in their own particular region. I could take that tip and apply it to this area of Florida or somewhere else that I go. And like, that's invaluable. It really is. Um, so my network of people that I built have just been uh, through trial and error, word of mouth, boat ramps, tournaments, and a little bit of online platform. Now all of it's in like one central hub. And like, like you said, Austin, they're all really good people. It's all just about genuinely helping other people. And that's exciting. You don't have to worry about what question you ask or, you know, oh, I've, you know, I've only caught catfish before. That's cool, man. I caught catfish for years until I, I learned it. And let me help you, you know, jumpstart and get to that point where you're out there getting a bunch of nice reds and, and saying, man, I'm really grateful that I asked that question. And I'm grateful that there's people out there to help me be successful. I love it. Yeah. Th I think we need to clarify something. It's not just the network effect or the community. It's having a helpful community. And, and you, you kind of touched on it because I, I remember Florida Sportsman Forum and it was, it was helpful. It, it's horrible right now. I don't know if it's even still available, but it went downhill for one reason. You mentioned protection. Like people got protective all of a sudden, seven, eight years ago. And they also just got negative. And this whole thing in society right now, where if, if I don't agree with Luke, all of a sudden I hate him and I bash him. And there's just like, I'm talking like crazy amounts of, of just hatred and cursing and stuff. And that just like infiltrated all these places where it was basically run by a bunch of bullies. And, and, and everyone internally was talking about like, man, it's just not fun anymore. And even our own Facebook group got like that for a little bit, where it's just, you know, the couple of bullies take it over and it's not fun. And so that was another reason that we created what, there's never a perfect community, but we were trying to make it as perfect as could be of, of helpful people who are like-minded who do, I mean, Justin, you nailed on the head, who just truly want to help and, and also want to help the newbies, right? Because that was another thing I saw in the, the some of the other forums and Facebook groups is if a newbie came in and, and asked a perfectly normal question for someone who's new and they all of a sudden get bashed, I mean, what does that do to that person? And I'm not talking about just self-esteem wise, but it just, I'm like, man, fishing sucks. I'm going to go back to something else. And there are some people that were celebrating that. Like you said, they didn't learn any more fishermen. Like, oh, they're going to take my fish. And that's not what it's all about. If we have that mindset, we're not going to have a new generation of anglers. We're not going to have younger people coming in and being excited about it. So we wanted to create a community that was absolutely helpful. We actually have made it impossible to even curse just because, and it's okay if you want to curse outside of the community. We, we don't have a problem with that. We don't judge. But I've just yet to see an online interaction become better or improve because of cursing. It just, it adds nothing. And in any case, it usually makes it worse. Um, so we just said, let's just have no cursing and no bullying, no belittling. And there's no dumb questions at, at all. And, uh, and we've kicked a few people out. I, I think there's probably three over the years that We've literally just pulled away and just gave them money back and said, you're just not a fit. Um, just causing, they were, they were bullies essentially. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't have time for it. Huh? Three out of now 25,000. And like I, I think because we make very clear what the rules are, we've done a good job of, I mean, people have gone to our about page and seen what we are and, and who we are and what we stand for. And, in, and it's all about uniting anglers in a very, very positive loving way and and i think most people see that coming in and it doesn't take long i mean you're you're spending money to get in this is not like a free facebook group and so you're checking out the other post like wow people are really helpful here like wow like look what austin just wrote to this guy like or gal like he just wrote a novel like how this is the most helpful group ever and so because of that they want they want to have the same kind of mindset and the same type of attitude so we've been able to track Fortunately, I mean, you know, 25,000 just great people. And, and I know at some point it'll be 50 and at some point it'll be 100. Uh, I don't know that we'll ever have, you know, 30 million, uh, like trying to get every, every angler in, a, in America doing it. But uh, it, it's been really, really, really powerful. And, and, and if you guys don't know, uh, our network is essentially, even though we have anglers in all 50 states, it's really Texas to Virginia and obviously everywhere in between all through the Gulf, Florida up there. I mean, pretty much everywhere there's redfish and, and speckled trout and flounder and obviously snook in a couple of the states. And now mangrove snapper and cobia, triple tail, you know, all the inshore saltwater species. At some point we might expand. We've had quite a few people have asked about, you know, going into bass fishing and because there was a lot of bass fishing reports actually for the people who live inland and even going out to, you know, California, other places. But for now it is, it's really primarily inshore saltwater fishing from Texas to Virginia. And, uh, and, and I think the other part, and, and some of you guys have been around longer than others, 
is the friendships that have been made. And, and I know, you know, why you've gone out and, and fished with quite a few members, both in North Carolina and in Texas. And, uh, you know, Justin, you have too. Austin, I believe you have, and you've, you know, literally gets on the phone and helps people out. Luke has, I have, and there's like legit friendships formed. Uh, in some cases, I mean, people that we're hanging out with, you know, on the, on the weekends and texting with and praying over. I mean, some just really cool, amazing relationships have happened uh, just through this community. So I, I'd love for you guys to share any, any cool stories you got. Yeah. My, uh, my current tournament partner for the redfish trails here in Texas, I moved down here and he's someone that I had messaged when I was in the Carolinas that, you know, just helping with helping with getting introduced to inshore fishing. He had questions, things like that. I moved down here and he offered to show me some areas that he liked to fish or some, you know, waiting spots. Cause you know, Waiting's a little bit different. You might not know from satellite maps whether you can actually walk an area or not. So it's nice to have someone invite you to go out and share a fishing trip with them. And now we're tournament partners and he's inviting me to go hunting with him, you know, upcoming fall. It's like there's a lot of really cool things that have developed just from helping someone in the community. Uh, it, it's really crazy. And the same thing happened in the Carolinas. I met so many people. We had awesome meetups and, you know, we'd go and have just everyone would meet up for little different fishing trips and then we'd all get together and have one big one. It's uh, it, it was really cool to see how the online interaction factored into keeping up with what everyone was doing. Uh, and, and when we finally get to meet up and all go fishing together. So it's a, uh, it's really cool to see how just a little bit of help online, helping somebody with uh, a way that you can rig a lure or a way to stop lizard fish from tearing up baits or just little, little things like that can turn into uh really really good and and positive friendship you know good people not just not just like facebook likes basically it's it's a lot more meaningful than just someone pressing like on a photo that's good who else uh um, like just, just 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 fishing with uh with tony prescott is one of our members just a super oh, nice yeah. guy yeah met met him and and we've gone fishing a couple times with him and I, i've lived in and around tampa bay for a while and I, I never once caught like got onto a school back black girl. You know, I see it all the time. Like Tony's always crushing them over there in the ski lagoon. And I was like, oh man, like if only we had this big black drum. And then uh, Tony Prescott got a tip that they come in to, to spawn at a certain time. And he's like, actually, it's coming up pretty soon. And so I was like, all right, Tony, let's go after him. And sure enough, like he actually got a tip from Captain Blair Wiggins. Um, so shout out to him. And and uh, they were exactly where they were supposed to be. We went out there, these big, big black drum tails are flying in the air it was amazing we both caught really nice ones it was just absolute blast and again like would have never had that tip without the network and would never even met had, had the pleasure to meet tony or to fish with them other than the network as well so countless stories like that even all meetups everybody's just so nice because it's all centered around fishing where where everybody there has and shares the same passion and and you can't help it you know there's i haven't met like a mean person at any actual event it's not like those like like joe mentioned those free facebook groups as soon as somebody has to put money down the relationship all the kind of the fluff in, in the in the super negative people that they, they they base their block of it you know that nobody wants to pay to to bully people they're out there in all the free stuff and and like we we have to kick out like three people a day from the facebook group from the salt strong facebook group and there's been three people kicked out in like three years or four years in the community that's the difference of of the paywall so that's um so that's why i've just been just super impressed it's been really cool watching it grow and it's just been getting better and better yeah i remember that with old blair wiggins the the mogan man and you know we got that text from tony right after blair had texted him this is all the network effect and remember it it said i mean we saw blair's text and um and he's basically like you got these two days they're coming in right now you have today in like 48 hours and it was spot on and we went again the next day and couldn't find him uh, it was really, really cool. And so that's that real time human intelligence, having, you know, people on the water that can give you awesome advice and are willing to share it. So it was really cool. And what about you, Justin? I think you were about to say something. And I was, I'm going to try to find the picture if I can. Um, so I met an insider, uh, Paul Gray, and he was one of the, one of the first members to get our custom bull bay rod, uh, that we had done. And we ended up just kind of chatting offline and we had a lot in common. I ended up, you know, doing insurance with Paul and I, we were talking and uh, he's like, Hey, I got a tournament coming up. Do you want to come down and, and fish with me? 
and uh, see if I can find that picture. And I was like, yeah, man, cool. Where are we going to go? He said, we have a, a local inshore and offshore tournament out of Fort Pierce. And we stayed in touch and came down. We hopped on a, we rented a boat at Freedom Boat Club, went out. He had been fishing the day before. And I got to share this picture. He ended up getting a monster snook the day before the tournament. And like, I was going down because I like Paul. I think he's a cool dude. He's getting more into the inshore side of things. I met him and his wife. I was able to come over and crash at his house, meet his dog, Lily, and uh, go out and do this tournament. And the day before, he's like, hey, man, I got on a big snook. I was like, yeah, that's cool. And he sent me that picture. And I'm like, holy bejesus, that's like a monster snook. Like, are we going to do that for the day of the tournament? We go out, rent the boat. He brought on a, a buddy of his that he's known for a while. We didn't do super hot in the tournament, but it didn't matter. Like, we got out, we saw like a monster four and a half foot barracuda in clear water. We saw a couple big snook that we couldn't get to. They were really shallow. And, you know, I remember the night before fishing Fort Pierce and um, we went to like some like little hole in the wall and, and got some tacos and hang out and, and drank soda and just like had a really good time. And now I'm remembering like I got to get a hold of Paul and we got to do an offshore trip uh, middle or end of August. He wants to do another rental down in Pompano and go for kingfish and sailfish and the crazy bigger stuff offshore that I like to do. And like, that's special, you know, like I, that's the kind of stuff that just gets me really pumped guys. Like I love catching big fish. That's cool. But I love going out and fishing with other people and having that memory where I'm like, I'm always going to remember the things we laughed about the day of the tournament. I'm going to remember fishing at Fort Pierce when we shouldn't have, because it was too rough. I'm going to remember the tacos. I'm going to remember Lily, his dog. Like those are the things that I keep with me my whole life. And no, like nothing can add up to that. So I've met a lot of great members when they came out to pick up the first couple batches of the custom rod. Yeah. I remember Jeffrey Honeycutt and uh, Brian DeHamco. She's a local there in Tampa, works at a, I think a coffee shop. Um, and she, she's just getting into it. And like two days later, after we shared some tips, she got her first redfish waiting on the flats in the northern part of Tampa Bay. I was like, that's so awesome. Well, you put, you put it in an application after we chatted. I told you a couple lures to throw. She went out and did it. And she's like, look, look what I got. Like, oh man, I'm like, I get so, it's just a high, like, it makes me really happy to, to know we can have those experiences. That's so awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've built relationships with a ton of people that I talk to on the regular pretty much. And which is awesome because they're not only in my area, they're all over the place. So if I ever wanted to travel somewhere else and that's just a leg up alone, you know, maybe even somebody to go fish with if they're available. Um, and then at that, um, seeing new people or not even just new people, but come into the community and then make posts about going fishing with other insiders. And you didn't even know that was happening. It was just kind of like, they're talking behind the scenes and stuff. It's just too cool. And also just people that believe there's so many people that really believe in what we're doing. Um, we have so many members that are literally commenting on every single post, which is awesome. It just goes to show that this is the real deal. You know what I mean? There's, there's not going to be anybody that's just coming to comment on every single post if they don't really believe in what we're doing here. I love it. And another little perk is I'd say the majority of our team members, you know, we have a pretty big team now, have, uh, have come from the community, have been you know customers, uh, including I think everyone on here. Maybe, I don't know, Justin, you might've been the only one who you were like about to sign up and obviously, you know, got an account right away. Uh, but everyone else, I mean, we came from the community, which is really awesome. And, and we do look at that obviously when we see resumes and it's wild that like, seems like the majority of resumes coming in are just people in the community. Cause they love it so much. Like, man, I'd, I'd be willing to quit my job to come work uh, for this company. It's got an amazing mission and big heart and, and just seem to be having a lot of fun. So that part's been really cool as well to see so many community members who have now turned into em employees and, uh, and people who are part of our, our internal salt strong family. So uh, I hope that's helpful. Hope that, that makes sense. You know, unfortunately, this is one of those things, and, and I've had this in other communities in, in my past, and including some that I'm currently in, uh, like C12, which I've talked about in some salt strong unchurched, you know, it, it's tough to put a value on the community. And it's almost like the community is not the sizzle, right? It, it's the meaning the sizzle of like what lures people into something like slam shady, or whatever they want the, the newest and greatest lure, the thing that's going to give them an edge. And, and, and those are great, but it, the community is like, it's the stake. Like once you get in, you're like, Holy smokes, like this is, this is what it's all about. This is the foundation of it. Uh, and so if, if you haven't joined us, I would, and that's the reason we have that 365 day 
100% money back guarantee. And we've tried to make it a complete no brainer, even double your money back uh, just to get you in there, to get you putting your first post, to hear from us, to hear from Austin, to see how positive this community is and, and ultimately how much time it's going to save you and build friendships. And of course, just you know, help you be in the right spot at the right time anywhere, even when you're traveling here, like throughout the summer. And, uh, and so I hope you join us. If you haven't already, go to saltron.com. Up at the top, you'll see a place to join the Insider Club. Made it super, super simple, just 27 cents a day. And like I said, you get all your money back if it doesn't work for any reason whatsoever in the first year. And of course, if you are a member, thank you guys so much. Like I said, we just hit 25,000 members not too long ago, and we're still pinching ourselves over that. And, and it is just so neat on how many friends that we have made and how many people we can just like roll off the tongue in terms of our members who are in there every single day. Uh, some who we've never met, some who we've met at some meetups, and we are going to be having some more meetups. We're going to have a pretty big one uh, coming up soon for all Insider members. And guess what? If you're not a member, you can't come. You will not get the invitation, guaranteed. But if you are a member, you're guaranteed to get it. And of course, a lot of new products just came out with Fred fooling redfish every day, not every time. Uh, Gold Digger, Slam Shady, the Z-Man Slam Shady Shrimp. Got some uh, other new things I can't tell you about yet, including some Raza. Oh, there's the old Gold Digger. Justin's got it. I think sweet. Um, so yeah, a lot of really, really cool stuff. Just, you know, we wake up every day one, just thankful and, and for such an amazing community. And two is like, you know, how, how do we keep them? Like, how do we keep them excited and willing to tell friends? And that's a big reason we've grown so fast is because of all the referrals. People are like, man, you got to come join this group. They're so awesome. So passionate, so positive. So uh, thank you guys so much uh, to all you guys on the podcast here. Thank you. This is a uh, super helpful, good, good stories. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the community. Yeah. Uh, that's community.saltstrong.com you try to go in you're not a member you're not going to be able to get in if you are you know community.saltstrong.com we made it super easy to join and i hope to see you in there you guys got any other ending notes besides justin had him do a bowl cut um so i'll say whether you are um gonna have to travel to the coast to go fishing whether you're going uh, whether you're an experienced angler whether um, you're brand new to fishing, um, you'll find value from the community 100%. And if you ever have a problem, if you do join the club, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I will make sure that it gets fixed up, guys. Austin's like, if you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the community. <laughs> while my DJ revolves it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the community, it's really, I know we touched on beginners a lot. Of, Austin, you nailed it too. This isn't just for beginners. And if you are a beginner and you actually spend a, just a little bit of time there, at a minimum, at least watch that 10 minute, just weekly game plan. That's like kind of the overview of everything. You're not going to be a beginner for very long. Uh, we have a lot of full-time guides who are in it every single week. This is the cool thing about saltwater fishing is there's so many different species, a lot of which are migratory. So no matter how much you fish, no matter how many years you've been fishing, it's impossible to know everything. And, and so that's why all of us are in there all the time. We we fish full time, yet we're still in all the time. And we're all learning a ton. Um, that, this saltwater fish, I, I, I grew up freshwater, I still like it, but just it doesn't compare to saltwater. It's just a, a forever changing puzzle. Every day is different. And, uh, and this human intelligence is by far, the key takeaway of this whole thing is the human intelligence is by far the most important thing you can have. So if you don't do this community, do something else, do another one. This happens to be the, the biggest and most helpful that, that either of us have ever seen. But um, I still recommend giving it a shot, but it's, it's, it's a game changer. I, I, it's one thing that's the biggest surprise that I've had is over all the analysis I was trying to do and just networking with like-minded and helpful anglers was the ticket. That was what actually made the biggest difference. It's good. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, like if I post a report I'm posting in the community and it's usually the good reports. So those of you in the community, you're going to learn a little bit about that puppy from this past weekend. Dinner time. Um, good, more good stuff like that. That's where all my reports are going, man. So, and, and it is, we did a whole podcast on the fact that it is now a, a mobile progressive app. So you can do it on your phone, your tablet, desktop, anywhere there's internet instant access. So cool guys. I appreciate you. And uh, we will talk to you guys in the next podcast. Yeah.